Good morning and welcome to People Online. This time we intend to do a series on HR analytics. The scope, however, is restricted to the very basics with an emphasis on applications, particularly those kind of applications that require less resources to run and perhaps can be best described as low hanging fruits. Session 14 Item Analysis Contents In this video, we would be covering what is item analysis? How is item analysis carried out? Item difficulty? Item discrimination? And we would follow this up with a couple of exercises. What is item analysis? Item analysis advocates use of statistical means to refine a draft test by eliminating weak items. So if the weak items are eliminated, the test would in the end have fewer items but would have greater predictive accuracy. The items eliminated would, would be the ones that A, show little variation within the sample tested and B, are unable to distinguish between overall high and low scoring groups. How is item analysis done? Item analysis is carried out by following two approaches, namely computing item difficulty and B, computing item discrimination. Let's go to item difficulty. Item difficulty is measured by the number of respondents answering the question correctly divided by the total number of respondents. The index of item difficulty varies from 0 to 1. Item difficulty simply means the fraction or percentage of respondents who have answered the question correctly. Okay, so it's just that fraction or percentage. When the item difficulty score is too high or too low, the item ought to be dropped. Obviously, because if it is too high, it means most of the people could answer the question. It's an easy item. And if very few people would be able to answer the question, then the item difficulty score would be low. So the acceptable range is 0 0.3 to 0 0.7, neither too high nor too low. Now, please note this is only meaningful for a test that uses items that have right or wrong answers. Otherwise, the notion of difficulty cannot exist. So, item difficulty is meaningful for an aptitude test, but not needed for a psychometric test. Let's go to item discrimination. An item discrimination index is a statistical index of how efficiently an item discriminates between persons who obtain high and low scores on the entire test. There are two approaches to cal calculating item discrimination. A. Item discrimination by use of extreme groups and B. Computing item discrimination by item total correlation. Item discrimination by use of extreme groups. And this is for a test that has right or wrong answers. The item discrimination index for a test item is calculated by using the formula D is equal to U minus L by N, where U is the number of respondents in the upper range who answered the item correctly. L is the number of res respondents in the lower range who answered the item correctly. And N is the total number of respondents in the upper or lower range usually any convenient number between 33% and 25% of the total number of respondents. A positive score greater than 15% for a sample size of 60 is desirable for an item to be deemed discriminating. And this is arrived at by uh, or was arrived at by Anastasi and Urbana, 1997. So, 
I think for all practical purposes, we can look at 15% to be a cutoff. And uh, keep in mind, higher it is, the more discriminating the item is. Exercise 1. The results for seven items in an aptitude test using a draft questionnaire is given below. 60 respondents in all who have been classified into three equal size groups of 20 each on the basis of scores in the test. U, M and L denote the number of respondents giving the right answer respectively from the upper 20, middle 20 and lower 20 of the group. You must be knowing that 20 by 60 is, is 33%. So we're looking at the upper 33% and lower 33% here. And we also have a middle a group which is of a similar proportion. Now, what is expected using the concept of item analysis? Which items would you drop? So, here I think the key lies in the fifth and sixth column. Fifth column is the item difficulty index, and the sixth column is the item discrimination index. So, we would keep those items which score adequately. Uh, on both these counts, that is difficulty and discrimination. Would you like to try this out? We have the solution in the next slide. Okay, so this is the result. So uh, the suggestion is that we need to uh, drop all items excepting 1 and 6. We will keep 1 because 1 is sh showing sufficient scores both on account of item discrimination as well as uh, i think uh, item difficulty so item difficulty let's check the computation once it's showing 0.52 for item 1 so how is it 0.52 it is 15 plus 9 plus 7 which is 31 divided by 60 and uh, how is item discrimination 0.4 well it is 15 minus 7 8 divided by 20 okay that's that's how we've got the scores so item 2 and 3 uh, they've got good discrimination scores but uh, the difficulty scores were a little bit on the higher side appears to appears that both items are easy and the reverse is the case with items 4 and 5 items are not discriminating Though in terms of the score 0 0.62, 0 0.58, these are basically the item difficulty scores. They're in the right range, neither too difficult, not too easy, but uh, they're not doing well on the discrimination front. And even item 7, though it's discriminating, is possibly a very, very difficult item with only 8% of the people have been able to give the right answer. Item discrimination by use of extreme groups. But this time for a test that has no right or wrong answers. Here one compares the item scores in two contrasting criterion groups and checks if the difference in scores is statistically significant. The upper and lower criterion groups are selected from the extremes of the distribution of total scores obtained in the test, where the data follows a normal distribution one may consider taking up the top and the bottom 27% of the sample to define the upper and lower criterion groups. This is as arrived at by T.L. Kelly. So for items where difference in scores for the two contrasting groups are found to be statistically significant, the item is retained. Note this method will also work with tests that have right or wrong answers. Item discrimination by item total correlation. Another very common and classical index of discrimination is the item total correlation. It is a correlation of the test takers' responses on each item and their total scores. The method is applicable for items with or without right answers. A high correlation is indicative of 
the item's ability to discriminate. So let's see an example. The scores for item number 8 in an aptitude test using a draft questionnaire is given below for 20 respondents who actually uh, took the test. 25 items in all, 2 marks for a right answer. Item score and total score for each person is shown here. Which item? This is the 8th item, item number 8. So use item total correlation to decide whether to keep or drop this item and take the cutoff of correlation coefficient to be 0.75 that we need to get something more than that so this is the data person 1 to 20 and for each one of them we know what they scored in item 8 and what is the total test score so if item score is x and test score is y we just need to run a correlation between x and y and because this is uh, data is continuous we can look at product moment correlation coefficient. That's exactly what has been computed in the solution. Since scores are continuous, we use Pearson's product moment correlation. Between item score and total score, we get a value of 0.842. Since this is higher than the cutoff value, we decide to keep the item from the point of view of item discrimination. I would say sufficient uh, item discrimination. Okay. So what did we cover? We covered what is item analysis, how is item analysis carried out, item difficulty, item discrimination, and a couple of exercises. Thank you for watching. If you could relate to the video, if you found it to be useful, do like and share. Do subscribe to our channel, press the bell button to stay tuned in for our next video. Until then, goodbye.